hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for a very special uh, French cooking class presented by Cyprian Simpowitz. Thank you so much, Cyprian, for, for being here this evening. And thank you all for, for um, giving a little bit of your time on this, uh, what's turning into a, a pretty nice evening here in, here in Kansas City as the wind pours through my, or the sun pours through my window. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the IRC, we're a nonpartisan apolitical organization that provides a platform for greater understanding of international topics and how they intersect with the Kansas City community. Um, for the uh, best experience for everybody, um, if you could just um, mute your microphones uh, if you're not speaking, we'd love to have you keep your cameras on and um, see you throughout the program. But if you could just keep your uh, microphones muted. Um, and then if you have a question for Cyprian or answering a question or something, feel free to unmute your mic uh, to answer that. Um, we will be uh, broadcasting this live to Facebook and recording it. So if you have any issues with that, um, feel free to just uh, just turn off your camera. Um, and then if you would like to connect with us, connect with us further, um, you can always head to irckc.org and see uh, a bunch of the great programs that we have coming up. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to uh, hand it over to Cyprian and uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Evan, and bonsoir, everyone. Well, I don't see anybody. I don't know what my daughter did. <laughs> she's here to help, and she's IT and, and vice chef, but tonight, le chef, c'est moi. Now, I'm, I'd like to picture. So, um, anyway, uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us, and with a good social distance, adequate social distance. So I hope you see everything here. I decided, um, you know, this is summer and in our family, uh, we like to eat things of season because they're fresh, they're at their best. And so I was thinking, what can I make? What can I prepare that I know to make? and um, that will use the vegetables uh, because it's gonna be a vegetable dish, the vegetable of the season that you can find in Kansas City. And so it's summer and summer in France, um, especially in Provence, which is a region of the Southeast of France. Uh, we, well, the whole of France eats but this dish comes from that region and it's called ratatouille. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this dish. So what is ratatouille? Well, it's a kind of stew, a mix of vegetables. Different people use different vegetables, but also of the season, uh, depending on what they like. So, we use aubergine in French, eggplant in English, or aubergine in English, English. We use courgette, zucchini, uh, or courgette in English, English, and tomatoes. And some people will add, normally the more classical recipe, they will add some green peppers. I don't like cooked green peppers, so I don't use them. Um, so you can't understand the story of the ratatouille, what the ratatouille dish is, unless you know a little bit of about each of the vegetables or fruit, because of course these are fruit. Courgette is a fruit, tomato is a fruit, etc. So. Tomatoes um, come from the New World and uh, they were cultivated, we think, by the Incas and they were called tomalt. And the, um, when the conquistadors arrived in uh, Central America and South America, they discovered it and they brought it back from the New World to the Old World, to Spain first, and um, they 
it, nobody thought that it was anything to eat. So it was cultivated mostly, it was for, as, a, as an ornament. Of course, they didn't have those big tomatoes here, but uh, they had those very small round tomatoes and they would cultivate them as an ornament. Guys, can you stop please? Thank you. And uh, since they were cultivating as an ornament, nobody was eating them. It was not until the uh, 18th century that some people started to eat the tomatoes. So I am first cutting the tomatoes. And actually I read a little interesting tidbit about the United States and the tomatoes. The tomatoes was fear because nobody knew really what it would do if you, if you ate it. So apparently in the town of Sa Salem, the infamous town of Salem in 1820, there's a man who decided to eat a kilo of tomatoes. And he ate a kilo of tomatoes and the doctors immediately said that he would die. Well, he did die, but 40 years later. So I'm preparing now the tomatoes. What I like to do, the tomatoes has, have a lot of water. So I like to disgorge the water. So I'm cutting the tomatoes. This is my trusty tomato knife to cut inside the tomato. And then I'm gonna cut roughly the tomatoes in about quarters or eighth or something like that. And basically, uh, for proportions, you know, I really do cook. Uh, we have this French expression, we call it pifometre, which means there's a slang word for nose, which is pif. So just by the nose. So I trust my nose and I say, okay, so here I have two big tomatoes. This recipe is about for four people. So I have two big tomatoes. I have about three medium-sized eggplants and five zucchini. You can use two medium or three medium zucchini. Um, I like smaller zucchini because I think that they have more flavor than the big ones. So anyway, I'm going to put the tomatoes that I cut in a plate and I'm going to put some salt on them to just render the, the water. So the tomato, when it arrived in the old world and it made its way to Italy, first it was thought as being a, 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 how do you say, an aphrodisiac. So that's why the Italians called it Pomodoro, the golden apple. Mm -hmm. And um, it retained its, its, its name until today, Pomodoro, but the French called it tomate because it's more closer to the original, we think, of Central and South America. So that's a lot of tomate. <laughs> and, um, okay, so, tomate, tomate, and tomate. tomate. Very important. Uh, It, it's not, it, ha, it did not become really popular to eat tomate until really the end of the 
uh, 18th century, beginning of the 19th century, and I told you the story of this, this man in, in Salem. So I'm going to put some salt over the tomate, and then we're gonna start. So I have, what we need is also some onions, about a, a big onion, and I already chopped it finely. And also, and also the, the ingredient par excellence of uh, French cooking in Provence, in the South. Okay. You cannot really cook or prepare any dish without garlic. And this is fresh garlic. We bought the tomatoes, the zucchini, and the eggplant in French aubergine. I will go back to that. Les courgettes and the tomate, we bought it at the organic market in Brookside. And so the garlic as well. So I chopped some garlic. I suggest like three cloves of garlic. I like to chop the garlic. Some people, and, and put it at, at first, but some people like to just use three big cloves of garlic and uh, put it in the middle of the vegetable. So you do as, as, as you wish. I, I uh, prepare some and I'm going to put another big clove uh, while we, uh, when the, we'll put the vegetables on. So the ratatouille itself, now I'm going to attack the eggplant. So the aubergine, the aubergine, we think, did not come from the, um, the New World, but came probably from the South East Asia. And it slowly made its, its way to, with the caravans, to Persia, and to uh, then Africa, where the, you know it's a very it's very bitter. Some people did not they it was thought as a a fruit that would make people insane, and so. Because it, it was thought as a vegetable that would make people insane, uh, in Italian, it, I mean, it stayed in the language. In Italian, the name for aubergine is melanzana, melanzane. Oh. So it has that, you can hear the sound insane, melanzane. So they have kept that the, the, the root, if you want, or the perceived root. And it was perceived as a terrible, terrible, like poisonous and really terrible, terrible. So no, no one was supposed to eat that. Uh, the, the Arabs or the Moors brought it to Spain, in Andalusia, and it made its, its its way up to Catalonia, where it was called al albergina, al for the Arabic al albergina, and so the French is aubergine, and also um, in Spanish, I believe I don't know whether Matthews with us or anybody else who can, but I believe it's bejenrenas. So it has kept that more Arabic sounding name. So I'm cutting the aubergine really very, very roughly. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be tiny. Just however you, you want it. Oh. This, this is, this is my husband, Jerry. Okay, he wants you to see 
how I cut the aubergine. <laughs> okay, so he has one. Maybe we'll. Ooh. The pastry have a good knife. This is a good knife, but it's a very fresh aubergine. So when the ratatouille had, as I said, all these vegetables, it's not a very ancient um, dish because as I mentioned, uh, the ingredients have been used rather recently uh, each, each of the ingredients, the courgette or the zucchini, I will get back to that also, you'll see. But the ratatouille first was supposed to be, was known, it, it, it was not called ratatouille, it's a ragu, it's a stew. The name first appeared in uh, some military book because, and it was, it, it appeared as something, the, 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 I'm paraphrasing, but basically it was described as a stew that was um, with, uh, bear, uh, with some bone, veal bones with hardly any flesh of it on it, with some vile things swimming in it and just good for rats. For a long time, and it just made, made sense because for a long time, the military called the food that they were being served, le rata, le rata. Of course, it must not have been very good. So it's not, it, it wasn't something that became very uh, sought after or cooked until really the beginning of the 20th century. But then, of course, uh, other countries have something very similar. The Italians have caponata, but uh, they make something similar all around the Mediterranean because it's a very Mediterranean dish. Well, I think maybe I have enough. I don't think I'm going to take that one. So I think I have enough. And now I'm going to uh, cut the courgette. Chloe, do you want to take this, please? Richard, did you have a question there? Yes. Anybody? Please, please don't hesitate to ask me a question because, you know, I tend, I tend to ramble. But so please don't ask me a question if you have one. It looks so, like we had a question about uh, where you get your produce from. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, we go to the organic market in uh, Brookside. Uh, there is an organic market that until the COVID-19, until this spring, um, well, they, it starts end of April and it ends end of October. Uh, until this spring, it was uh, used to be located in uh, on the parking lot of the what was Border that school? Star. The Border Star School on 63rd, uh, uh, right at the corner of 63rd and. Uh, and and well and well now, and uh, so it's small. It's a small market, it and yeah, it's a small market. But um, you have, uh, I mean, as I said, if the it's the season, they will have the vegetables of the season. Now they are located just a little bit more south. Uh, just uh, maybe in the um, 
where is that? Across from the parking lot of St. Andrews, I think, mm -hmm. uh, on Warnell, on on uh, south, a little bit south of Meyer Boulevard. But it's the same people. And of course, now, uh, you know, it's social distance and you have to wear your mask and, and everything. So it's a, it's a bigger space, but, but the, same, the same people. There are also people who um, um, uh, sell uh, chicken, uh, beef, uh, flowers, uh, these, type, uh, these type of, of, of products also. So, La Courgette. La Courgette also came from the New World. And um, it, it was actually, I need to, to, to read my notes because Courge, um, Courgette is like a small courge because the et in French, it, most of the time indicates a small a small of something. So courge is a big, you know, the, the big ones and the courgette is, is the small ones. But apparently in the 16th century, the conquistador discovered ascutasquash of the native uh, Americans or the, the, the natives of the new world and they brought it back for the botanical gardens uh, of, of Spain. At first, nobody was eating that. It was the same as the tomato. So, um, and, and actually eggplants the same. In England, the eggplant, apparently, they were cultivating the variety, which was very small, like an egg and very beautiful. So in English, aubergine is eggplant egg plant, the plant like an egg, because it was the small. But with the courgette, it was the same. So um, the people didn't, didn't eat them. They didn't know what they were. And they said, what are, what are these? We're not eating. Is They're nice to look at. And you'll know that I'm sure that courgette have also flowers. So it's not until really the 18th century that you start seeing some books and, as, as, and apparently in a noble family of Paris, you see, I'm getting hot, a book where courgettes are mentioned. But it's a most delicious, we say vegetables, but it's a fruit. And it's, it's part of a, what they call the fruit à moelle. Moelle in French means marrow. So, because it has the thing in the middle, of course. So, sure, I'm almost done with the courgette. And we are going to be almost ready to start cooking. I need to tell you, though, that this is not going to be ready in half an hour. Normally, la ratatouille is a stew that needs to be cooked in low heat, on low heat. We're going to use olive oil, of course, low heat for about an hour, an hour and a half. But you will have a wonderful vegetable stew you will be it, it, with the flavors of summer and you will really, you can have for the next day, it'll be even better. And the next day, if you've made enough, um, we like it. Ah. So my husband, always very practical, is asking me, well, what kind of wine would we drink with this ratatouille? Of course, um, we can drink a good 
if it's hot, you know, it's summer. As I said, it's, it's summer, it's hot, or you want something refreshing. And so a good rosé, especially from Provence, Bandol, Bandol rosé, delicious, delicious wine that goes very well with the ratatouille. And so I'm going to have a glass. <laughs> I hope a glass of it, I, not a glass, a little bit, because I, I, I don't want to cut myself, of course. So anyway, you, you may, you are allowed to do the same wherever you are. So it's interesting because, you know, France is a con country of contrast. And one of the contrasts is the cuisine because uh, every region, you can travel 50 kilometers and you will have another type of cuisine. But grosso modo, as we say, you can say the no. Sorry? Oh, maybe it's uh, echo. Grosso modo, in the, in the north, you can say people use a lot of butter and cream, creme fraiche, of course. My husband calls it secret sauce, creme fraiche. In the south, of course, in the southwest, where the ducks, you know, foie gras come from, etc., they will use uh, a lot of duck fat. And in Provence and south, southeast, the Rhone and southeast, they will use olive oil. But, so now we've, we've cut most of the vegetables, so we can start maybe putting a little bit in the, I wonder, do I have enough uh, eggplant? Yeah, I think so, maybe. <laughs> so, let me cut a little bit more. Uh, let me see. Santé! So, I will uh, cut a little bit more garlic. Anybody has any questions or anything about France, French cuisine? Uh, Anything? No? Okay. <laughs> you know, I am not, I'm really a home cook. I am not very good. I was never very good. But as I told my husband, I can do mediocre pretty well. So, I learned by myself, my grandmother, my mother's mother, was an excellent cook. Um, my mother, mm, it depended. <laughs> she knew how to make Wiener Schnitzel. She knows because, I mean, she's still alive. She just turned 93. But she uh, knew how to make Wiener Schnitzel very well. Um, and I, you know, I just learn on my own. I improvise. Sometimes I follow recipes, sometimes I don't. So it's more fun that way. So I then a little bit more garlic. And one other ingredient that is going to be very important, not one, but it's an overall ingredient it's what we call in, in French, herbe de Provence. So herbs of Provence. Uh, herb de Provence, why herb de Provence? It's an it's herb, so what do they consist of? You have fresh thyme, uh, basil, um, oregano, Oregon, sage, laurel, tarragon, um, what did I put? Rosemary, 
Uh, you can put also marjoram. And why are they called Herbes de Provence? They are called Herbes de Provence because Provence, as I say, is the southeast. In the summer, it can get very hot. It's a drier climate. And in Provence, you have this vegetation called la garrigue, garrigue. And what it is, it's a vegetation. La garrigue is a, a small brush, a little tree, you know, small brush. But the whole area covered by garrigue is called la garrigue. So it's a perfect climate, especially in the summer, to grow all these herbs. And this is why we call them Herbes de Provence. If you don't have fresh herbes, fresh herbs, you can use dried Herbes de Provence. I bought that at, uh, I think, William Sonoma a long time ago. But of course, you can see that this is not French because in French, herb it's H-E-R-B-E-S. So this is the English uh, word, herbs, of Provence. And they keep in this clay pot. And if you don't have fresh herbs, you can put some dried herbes de Provence. There can be also some dried lavender in there because lavender you find in Provence, there are some beautiful fields of lavender, not to be confused with lavandin, because lavandin is, uh, grows in the lower uh, part of, uh, I mean, in, in more in the valleys. And the true lavender grows up at least 600 meters of 600 meter high. So anyway, just in case, you don't have any fresh air, you can always do that. So this is absolutely essential, just as uh, garlic is essential. And of course you, you can add, so you can add some spice. So now we're gonna start cooking. Uh, we're gonna put things together, but it won't be ready by seven, but you get the idea. If you leave, you, 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 you simmer it or very low fire and it allows the vegetables to impregnate one another with all the flavor and perfume. Some purists say that you have to cook each vegetable separately and then you put them together and you cook them a little bit more. Well, that is just too much washing up to do. And, and really, uh, they can, they can um, they, right now, I think, uh, I mean, I've never done it that way. I've always done it cooking together. So this is how I do. Um, so, okay. Uh, tomatoes cook much faster than uh, the other vegetables. So um, I do, I'm sure some, some people in the, you know, if they see this thing on Facebook or whatnot, you know, they're going to say I'm really silly. But in any event, um, I start, I put the, you'll see, I put the olive oil and I think I start with the eggplant. So, um, since we have a little bit more time, I think I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, cut one more eggplant. Because as I said, uh, you can keep it for the next day and the next. It's really, uh, very convenient. A very convenient dish. We did have a question that came in from Pat. It said, 
I learned in France that you take a clove of garlic and cut it in half and remove the germ from every clove of garlic before adding it to anything. Do you do that? Well, I understand what that person is saying, but if it's fresh garlic, if it's fresh enough, there shouldn't be a germ inside. So uh, I, I know, and it can be pretty bitter because the germ this is like when it starts germinate and it's a little green. No, I take the green out if I see it. But this is pretty fresh garlic that uh, I got also. And now I figured out that I keep the garlic uh, in a dry, dark place. So I put it in a, in a bowl somewhere else where it's dark on the other side there. And uh, I put a torchon, I mean a, a this dish towel, what not, on top of it. And uh, let, let it do. Oh, I have a, a garlic, a special garlic pot. And you can find those online. It's made out of clay and it, it has uh, holes. And so you keep the garlic in there and I put it in one of my cabinet so it's dark, you know, it doesn't see light. And I think it's better that way. But I, I have thrown out uh, a fair share <laughs> of garlic bulbs because I was too slow in using them. But yes, you should not, you should not use, because some people say it's poisonous. And anyway, it's very bitter. So that's why also possibly some people cook the ratatouille just with the, I mean, they put three, uh, three, what do you call that? Three, what do you call that? Three cloves. Three cloves, thank you. Three cloves of garlic inside the vegetables instead of chopping the, the garlic. So maybe that's better, I, I don't know. We can try any, any which way, uh, I guess, and see which one works best. Okay, so we're going to start now putting the stuff inside. So can, can everybody see? Maybe Chloe will, will take the... Ah, hello. So I am... I am... Um, this is anathema because, as I said, normally it's olive oil. But I like a little butter. And it is... So does our dog. <laughs> because the dog loves butter too. His name is Diego. And I use French butter, of course. I use... Uh, this is salty butter. I like both. But uh, this is a beurre de barat. Churn butter, you can find it at the French market in, at Prairie Village. It's a delicious, delicious butter. So I put a little bit of butter, a little piece like this, of course. Butter, as Julia Child would say, is good for you. So, butter. And uh, olive oil. Oh, a lot of olive oil because I love olive oil and it's good for you. So you cover basically the, the bottom of the of your your pan. This is, by the way, a Dutch oven, but it's it's French. It's from Le Creuset. I have a lot of Le Creuset in my house, as you can imagine. It's a Dutch oven. So what I do, um, I put the garlic when this when uh, this is cold because it, sometimes I found that if I put garlic when the olive oil is already hot the garlic tends to burn very quickly and it doesn't it doesn't allow the garlic to express its flavor so I will put the pieces of garlic in there We will turn on and a small fire, low fire, low fire, and it will do its stuff, right? 
for a little bit. So I'll wait until this, this melts. What time? Oh, we have, we have, yeah, in 10 minutes, I think every, everything will be in. And then if you have more questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. Sure. What kind of olive oil do you use? Ah, very good question. So, only the best. <laughs> <laughs> this is a special olive oil from Vieux Telegraph. Do you, does any, maybe some of you know Vieux Telegraph? Vieux Telegraph is uh, in the South Rhone, is in the Chateau Neuf du Pape area. And uh, this family has a, a wine, produces, uh, and makes, has been making the Brunier family a, a, a delicious Chateau Neuf du Pape under their label, Vieux Telegraph, because I think uh, there was an old telegraph line that, that passed there, or the, the old house. And recently, they have been making also olive oil from, I assume, from their olive trees, because of course, as I told you, Provence, South Rhone, is a perfect, uh, perfect climate for everything that grows in, in hot and dry climate. So beautiful olive trees and of course, delicious olive oil. So this is what I, I, I uh, use, but you know, they have great olive oil. We belong to a club, olive oil club, and we receive olive oils from Australia, from Chile, uh, of course, from Italy, from Portugal, from Spain. Uh, so wh whatever is in season and it's extra virgin olive oil. So this is, this is, um, this is mel melting the olive oil and the butter and the garlic are doing their thing. So now I'm going to, uh, Put the onions. Where did Chloe go? Okay. So I'm, I'm putting the onions. One big onion, as I said. Uh, where are my things? What else can I get for you? Yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I'm just getting my, my wine. Oh. Yeah. So here, the onions are doing their thing also. We'll let them also simmer, you know, for about a minute or two. Like this, right? I'm gonna augment the fire a little bit. The problem with the eggplant is that once you that's okay, Jerry. Thank you. Once you know when you cut them, they get a little uh, a little dark very quickly. And by the way, eggplants also have a lot of water in them. So some people uh, also do the same thing as I did for the tomatoes. They 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 cut them roughly, the uh, the eggplant, and then they put some salt on them and let them render also water. But for this. I don't really find myself the need for another dish that I regularly make, a plan, a tian, which is called a, the tian vieux telegraph. I, 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 I do that a little bit more, but so anyway, so I'm waiting here for the onions to, uh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, but yeah, I'm waiting for the onions to to uh, get a little bit transparent. So there's a choice here. Uh, some people like to put a bouquet of finzer, meaning putting them together with a little string 
And, and just as they like to put their three garlic cloves in there, they put a string around the, the fins herb, no, sorry, the herb de Provence, which is sometimes the same. But I like it, I like to, um, I like to peel my, my thyme, for instance. I like them really disseminated in the, in the stew, in the ratatouille, or any stew from the South, actually. So people who, we don't eat really meat other than fowl in this house. So uh, a good, an animal that is also raised in Provence, and it goes well with ratatouille is lamb. So lamb with thyme and ratatouille is delicious. Okay, so let's, we'll put now the, the eggplant. I have to diminish. That's okay. They, they, yeah, okay. So we'll put them in there. I have one more garlic and I'm just going to put it in there. You have the rest of this. Uh, and more eggplant? Yeah. Oh my God. We're going to have for, for a whole week, I bet. Oh no, how sad. <laughs> okay. Go but having something so delicious. Yes. And, and healthy. And healthy, and healthy, right. Delicious and healthy. So, so in France, as I was saying, there are you know, many regions that we have admin, administ, administratively on the continent, actually, there are 13 regions. And this region where the dish comes from is Provence, uh, Alpes, Côte d'Azur. Côte d'Azur means the Riviera. So Provence is just above, you know, the Riviera. So, as I said, a lot of garlic, a lot of olive oil, a lot of these type of, of dishes. In the southwest, you will have things a little bit more uh, corsé, as we say, a little heavier, because it's with duck and, and duck fat and things like that. So, all kinds of duck. And of course, you have Bordeaux, vin de Bordeaux, Bordeaux wines, and wines from Bergerac, the Dordogne. The Dordogne is that area where you have all the caves, the prehistoric caves. And so here we are. So the eggplant absorb the um, olive oil pretty quickly. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the uh, courgette. Right now, we're going to put the courgette in there. There. So, and I'm going to stir. So the courgette benefit from the garlic and the onion and the olive oil. Okay. And it is, uh, I have this new, new stove and it's pretty strong so I have to be careful and I will let them take a little bit like this and then uh, what I'm gonna do the after my wine I'm gonna put the tomato but the tomato, I'll have to drain them first of the water that they have rendered. Because, you know, I don't want anything to be too watery. Because, of course, with the courgette, which tend to have a lot of water in them, it, it can be a little watery. But it's not a problem. If you see that it becomes too watery, because you will have to cover it, of course. If you see that it becomes too watery, then you uncover it. 
you uncover the ratatouille and you let it cook on very low fire without a, without a cover for, you know, 15 minutes or whatever. And so it'll be just fine. So we had a question that said, uh, due to the fact that eggplants absorb most of the oil, is there a reason why, why you added them first? Because they, they cook, they are the, they are the, they take the long, the longest to cook. So I, you know, as I said, I'm not a professional. Maybe somebody will tell me, oh, this is totally stupid. You can just put everything at the same time. But I, I as I, as you saw, I just let them, you know, a couple minutes and then uh, the olive oil, but you will see what I do with the olive oil though. So, okay, so now everything's in it, except for, I will put very little sage, because sage is a, uh, an herb, a, a, a plant, an herb, a French, a uh, fresh, uh, fresh herb, the Provence, that I really use more for roasting. As I said, that's why, you know, if you like lamb, you can roast a leg of lamb with, with sage, one leaf of, I call laurel, but you call it uh, bay, leaf. bay leaf. Little bit of uh, li um, uh, basil, basilic, basilic, we say. A um, little bit of rosemary here. Little bit of tarragon. I'm a big believer in, in herb. I don't like too spicy, but Les herbes, they don't make things spicy, they just make things savory and tasty. And as I said, uh, I like to, to kind of peel, peel my uh, thyme so it really absorbs uh, the taste of the vegetables. So here it is, more time, more time, more, more, okay, a little bit more, here, a little bit more, this is fresh time. And you know, the funny thing is, I don't know how to grow herb. I, I, I'm sure time could grow here in my garden, you know, like nothing. But I really don't have a green thumb at all. So I'm sure it would die with me. So anyway, so this is what I, this is what I do. Voila, voila, voila. And a little bit, of, so now, salt. So we start with that, then of course, in the course of the cooking, you always taste some black pepper and you can add any spice you want. I myself add the, the secret uh, spice, which is actually sel de Caraïbe, Caribbean salt flavored with smoked paprika. And it gives a nice little taste, a little bit of spice. The salt is not that salty, but it gives a very good little taste. So, uh, I don't know. I, my husband asked me, what, where's my, my thing? My husband asked me what store, and actually I just bring it back from Guadeloupe because we, we, we used to go to Guadeloupe before this COVID. We used to go to Guadeloupe. My brother is a doctor in Guadeloupe and my sister-in-law as well, even though now they're gonna go to Canada, can you imagine? And so um, I would bring it back and I'm going to miss it because we can't even go to Guadeloupe, nobody wants us. Guadeloupe, as you know, is an island of the Caribbean. It's one of the regions of France. 
it's a true department of, of France. It's real France. And so they don't want us. We have a comment in the Zoom that uh, says smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is also very good. Yes, smoked paprika. This is a salt with smoked paprika. So now everything is in in there. So uh, we are going to put the lid on it. And as I said, on the very low fire for about uh, an hour, an hour and a half, you, you taste every so often and see whether you need a little bit more olive oil. Actually, I, I need a little bit more olive oil right now. A little bit. Ooh, whoops. And then I'll let it do its thing. And in an hour, we should be ready to eat. But the, long, the longer you cook it, the better. So an hour and a half, I would recommend but it's a little already five to seven. So if we want to eat around eight, this is what we'll do. But it'll stay in the pot and for tomorrow night we'll have it. That's it. Wonderful. Does anyone have any uh, final questions for, uh, for Cyprian? Thank you so much, Cyprian. I know everyone really enjoyed this. Does anyone have any uh, final, final questions for Cyprian before we sign off? No. Okay. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's one apparently. No comment. Well, we'll check that out. What, was it a good comment? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much to to Cyprian, everyone who joined us. Um, Always uh, feel free to check more out about the IRC at irckc.org. Um, I hope you I hope uh, to see you at a future program. And again, thank you so much to Cyprian, everyone who joined us this evening. And um, if you would like to review any of uh, what you, what Cyprian covered, uh, this video should be up on uh, YouTube in about a week's time or so. So look forward there. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Merci. Bonsoir. Merci. Au revoir.